Hello, and today we're going to be talking about Python while loops. Thank you for watching. We're going to get right into it here. So here is the uh, basic kind of um, template for a Python while loop. So we have while, then some expression, and then some statement that we will loop through as long as this expression is true. All right. So here is a real example, not just an abstract one. So we have a um, counter here. And while that counter is less than five, we are going to increment that counter by one. So every time it loops, oh, my indentation is wrong here, but don't just, you'll see what it does. <laughs> um, so the counter is going to increment each time it loops, and that's going to print the number. And then once it hits five, this expression here will no longer be true. So it's going to loop as long as this expression is true, that counter is less than five. Um, as soon as that becomes false, it stops the loop. And you can see that happens here. So we go through once, one, two, three, four, and five. And there it would be a, there is actually a sixth iteration that um, is tested, you know, so it goes through this iterate on the fifth time through this loop. It is um, added to once, then counter becomes six. And it goes into the while. So while counter is less than five, it would do this. But counter is actually six, so it tests as false, so it just stops the loop. Yeah, so just to go back one more time, the while loop, as long as this expression here is true, it will continuously loop over these statements. So in this, once again, this while loop here, that counter, as soon as that counter value is no longer less than five, it'll stop. Yes. Actually, it doesn't get to six. It does not get to six, I don't think, because it, it increments to five, prints five, and then heads into the loop again, then five is equal to five. So that is false. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so, but hopefully you understand what while loops are, um, because you know they're, they're kind of a, once again, like some of the other videos we've done, it's one of those kind of fundamental concepts of programming languages. So hopefully you've encountered it before. Um, if not, you know, I can go back and do some really fundamental videos about what these control structures do. Um, okay, so we have a break here. Um, so we've got a counter again, and that counter will um, increment each time it loops. And our while statement is, while the counter is less than five, this is going to loop, all right? So once again, we increment the counter each time for each loop, but then we have this if statement here. So if the counter is equal to three, we are going to break. So a break, just like with um, the for loop, is going to stop the loop. It's going to break out of it and go to the next line. Um, and so that will happen once that counter reaches three. It's going to reach break, and then it will not print counter because the entire loop has stopped. Um, so you can see that it goes one, two, and then when it's at three, when it's got when counter is equal to three, it goes to this if counter is equal to three break, and it just stops and no longer loops. Because you can see in this one, it keeps on looping until um, the counter is no longer less than five. This one, that condition here is still the same. It just, this break statement just breaks the loop. Continue, once again, just like if you watch our previous video with the for loop, same thing. It doesn't break the entire loop, it just breaks that particular iteration. So, you know, as you're iterating through that loop one after another, after another, after another, you can break out, break that iteration and stop processing that iteration and then move on to the next iteration. So we've got our counter again. We've got the counter as long as the counter is less than five, we will increment the counter and then we'll do as we just did previously. Previously, instead of the counter was three, we'll break. We're going to continue. So that continue statement is going to end this iteration and start the next one. So we'll never actually print three. All right, that's what happens here. We've got one, two, the counter is equal to three, and so it continues, so it breaks that iteration, and then moves on to four, and then five. Else, um, once again, very similar to the for loop. Um, the else executes when the expression is false, but not when the loop is terminated by a break, right? So this here, this while, while that is true, it will continuously loop, continuously. So if you actually decide while true, it would just do it continuously. Now, when it's false, 
It doesn't. It's the first time it goes through that loop and it's false. It does not execute again. But that's where the else statement can come in. So here we go. Take a look here. The counter, once again, at zero. As long as the counter is less than five, we're going to increment it. And then we're going to print the counter. The, the counter. Um, and then once we're all done, we're going to print out out of numbers. That's what we do. One, two, three, oh, three, <laughs> three, four, five. And then counter is less than five. That statement is false. So we will print out out of numbers. All right. Um, and here is an example of if you were to trigger a break. So just like earlier, we had the break that it breaks at th when the counter is equal to three. We're doing that exact thing here. But now we have this uh, else statement here. Note that the else statement does not execute if the for loop is broken. All right, so you may want that kind of functionality. So the else loop here will execute one at the very end, but if you break out of it, it will not execute. Um, pass, just like the for loop, and we've seen some other kind of uh, control structures maybe, the pass is kind of, it's do nothing statement. It's used when, or program requires no action. Um, oftentimes it's boilerplate or it's um, kind of a placeholder. But um, you may find yourself in a certain situation where you do need that while loop, but you want to pass. So this is a no good statement really, because uh, while true, that's going to loop forever and it's just going to pass. So it's going to do nothing forever until you, you kill that process. Um, let's see. Oh, and we are all done. Yes, the while loop was particularly quick. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you found this video useful, um, please leave a comment in the uh, comments below. And if you like this channel and want to see more Python tutorials, please subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them inside um, the comments field, and I will, I will do my best to answer every one of them. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.